first thing on the uh, agenda tonight would be a presentation of the budget for Frontier uh, for the year 2020. Um, we invited all the select board and finance committee people to our meeting and we we have one. Thank you, Scott, Thank you so all. far. And they'll come after the meeting's over, which is what they did the last time. You want to, you want to, Mark, would you like to take I over and have present? nothing to offer? Sure. And then Bill can chime in later. Since he's done, I'll get my two cents worth in. So I'll give you the highlights. Um, on the first page of the budget, you have the overall changes by category. Um, I can tell you that the, the three major changes that occurred in the budget this year um, were number one, there was elimination of a special education teacher. Um, also, the transportation bid was rebid this year and came in substantially higher than it had been on the last five year contract. So that's up about $185,000. Um, and also the transportation reimbursement from the state had dropped about $36,000. So it's really transportation made the biggest swing in the budget from last year to this year. The overall increase in the budget was $417,961 for an overall change of 3.78% for FY20. Uh, the second page is basically the cherry sheet from the state, the Chapter 70 reimbursement, private school tuition reimbursement. As you can see, the transportation dropped from 179 to 99. Um, and then you, you have the offsetting receipts, school choice receiving tuition, which is down, um, and then the sending tuition, which is also dropped for both school choice and charter, so that was helpful. So the overall uh, cherry sheet from 19 to 20 went from 3.1 million to 3 million. On page four, basically, you've got kind of a summarization of the students, both sending and receiving for school choice and for charter. And following that is the line item budget by category. And what we did when we built the budget, I think most of you know this, but um, in addition to the regular all funds, which is all sources of funding for the budget, which is that peach colored column or pink column, the blue column to its right is the proposed local budget. And when you see those columns to the right, circuit breaker, school choice, bed grant, title one, as you go through the budget lines, offsetting items that are charged to those grants show up in those columns. So the overall budget, as you go through it, totals on page 14 at $11,466,415, including transportation, to again an overall increase of 3.78 over the 11,048,454 that exists in the current FY19. Section two is the assessment data as to how um, expenses are assessed assessed out to the towns. Um, first is the calculation for enrollment that gives you the assessment percentages. 2014 was dropped, 2019 was added because it's a rolling five year average. So it didn't really change the percentages um, except for one tenth of one point for, for Conway. Everything else stayed remained the same compared to last year. The page after that, page 17, is an assumption of the revenues. So it's the assessments to the town, plus the chap chapter 70 that, this, that DESE has allotted to Frontier. Uh, application of $200,000 for E&D. And I just want to, on a side note, just let you know that E&D has been certified. Um, regional transportation, as you saw on the reimbursement on the cherry sheet, is $99,343. Bring you to that total. On the following page is the required minimum contributions as determined by DESE. So it shows you the changes, first of all, the student changes for foundation enrollment, and then the required minimum contribution as it changed from 18 to 19 to 20. Following that is, on page 19, is the operating budget, how much is assessed out to each school each town. As you can see for the operational budget um, for Conway, it's a large increase this year, 9.95. That's because they had a wealth factor increase um, due to some things that came into the town, so that are kind of going to run in and out of the town's books. But for now, it had an impact on their overall assessment. 
Um, and then as you can see, Deerfield was a 1.8% increase in operational assessment. Sunland was 0.28, Whitley was 2.03 for the overall assessment of 2.54. And below you can see the breakout between operating from 19 to 20, transportation from 19 to 20 combined. On the following page, you have the calculation of the assessment, which is the general fund operating budget. Well, the general fund budget, which is with transportation, minus transportation, minus E&D, minus um, the Chapter 78, brings you to the funding to be allotted to the school, to the towns. One million for Conway, 2.4 for Deerfield, 1.1 for Sunderland, 605 for Weaver. Final page is the assessment for transportation. The overall transportation budget is $432,000 for regular transportation. Once again, the reimbursement was $99,000. So the amount to be assessed to the towns based on the percentages um, for enrollment is $332,657, appropriated based on the percentages. So that's kind of like a, just a quick synopsis of the budget. I don't know if anybody has any questions. Been a couple of cuts at it, but I know. You want to add anything, Bill, to it at all? No, I mean we we all had this discussion just a couple nights ago up in Conway. So you've heard you've heard all my speeches with regards to the budget already. Olivia, this is this the first time you got a chance to look at it, or yes. you get? Okay. This is my first time. Okay. I thought I was going to get you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> I could just add a little something about uh, about the transportation. The transportation, like I said, it has gone up a lot. Well, don't forget no, the new contract the, coming up that we'll be voting on. We'll be well, we'll be seeing it tonight for the first time, yeah. and we'll be voting on it at the joint meeting That's next the, month. The net um, it is a new contract, so you know if you look at the last contract with the adjustments versus the new one, it's for Frontier. It it went up. I went up a lot um, for for elementary. It went up like two bucks, two dollars a bus. At Frontier went up a lot, so. Um, but we're still, we're. I mean, Gripco. I could say Gripco was the lowest bid, only bid. Right. I, I was going to ask. Yeah. That. I mean, in these small regional towns, I, mean, I don't know of any yeah. other bus company. So, does he have a monopoly on it that is a disadvantage to having a bid put out? Well, I mean, the only thing I can tell you, correct, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, they, um, I think there was, whoever does Franklin Tech also did a, an over, overall view of what they would bid on it. And I think ours was, I think Lenny was three, 327 or 329 a day. And the other one was 394. So even though somebody else didn't put a bid in, but there was. No, <clears throat> that's not a reflection of our contract. Right. That's the da per daily bus rate of the towns north of us. So they did a cooperative bid. So they all decided to get together to, um, we decided to opt out of that, knowing that um, it was, this year they did a no opt out clause. So if we got in, we had to accept whatever that bid was. And so uh, we opted out, knowing that the uh, by Grip Grove transportation was in order in the past, and that. We didn't believe that we were going to get a better deal, and we were correct. And so, if you look at the market that's in the area, he's he's been he's been competitively unfair. The way he's hit within his contract for us, and this is full. You know, we're still talking about it and such. But because um, we're not voting on it, it's nice for you to review. We have one at your place. Um, we'll vote it together at the, at the joint meeting. But his um, his positioning within this contract is that. He's hitting Frontier, because Frontier gets transportation reimbursement and putting less on the towns. You know, um, I believe you mentioned to somebody that you can adjust the numbers around to spread it out, but that's the way it kind of 
kind of went out. And if Frontier got 100% transportation reimbursement, which they originally said, that would have been that would have been that would have been well within uh, we would have been more than fair. But you know, right now that transportation number is low. I think that transportation number will go up um, from the governor's budget. So I don't think the hit will not be as heavy as that we're seeing right now. Um, but uh, that's the case. So everybody that's new that's coming in, we did start the public meeting at 602. There's copies of the budget. We have extras budget and the assessments. There's the, they're stapled together. Uh, yeah. We have more copies that we can hand out. On page 21 of, is it 19? On page 19, this will bring you guys up to speed. Uh, um, that's the assessments to the town <coughs> at the bottom. Like I said, Mark went through the operating budget. Those are the assessments. So where, where it says FY 2020 combined assessments, that's the figure for each of the towns? Yes. Right. Yes. Combined the operating budget and transportation. Give you a few minutes to look at if you have any questions we're here to answer any questions scott yeah if i could mr chair on page 17 of the revenue analysis is, is the assessment to towns chapter 70 e and d transportation and the transportation revolving fund the only available revenues the school sees and if so how are those other revenues whether they're fees for sports or are they linear and not reflected on the expense side how does that work out those can't be the only, I'm assuming those are not the only revenue sources. Mark, do you want to say something? You're good. You're good. You're good. Wow. In terms of the application to the budget, yes, these are the revenue sources. The only one other potential one would be Medicaid reimbursement, which it looks like historically has not been applied as a revenue. Um, the assessment, the Chapter 70, and the regional transportation, those are all numbers that come from DESE. The E and D is, is an amount that is discussed by the school committee in terms of application to reduce the assessment amount for the budget. So no special revenue funds, no sports fees, none of that stuff. That all passes through to its individual program. It's not reflected in the budget that we're seeing? It's reflected in the, if you look at the, the original is budget that um, is the line item budget, yep. any of those special revenue funds in terms of circuit breaker, Ball. school choice, or SPED yep. is applied against the budget to get to the local amount. Yeah, so they are reflected. Thank you. Did you have any questions, Bob? I no. just want to make, make it clear that this budget here is the transportation and the general operating. It doesn't include any capital plan or capital. That'll be more separate. Right. Paul, I know you showed up a little late. We, we opened right at 602. We waited a couple minutes and the only thing that we went through was some um, the operation budget with the increase of you'll see there on the second page at 3.78. Um, well, I haven't had a chance to look at this. Okay. Apparently, it came in. It came in late this afternoon, yeah. and uh, so I haven't had a chance to look at it. But I believe Darius told us that this meeting is going to be in Conway. That was last Thursday. That was last Thursday. 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 <coughs> Sorry about that. Man. Sorry if you want. Did you go to Conway? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, we were up there last Thursday for our regular meeting because 
a lot of the people involved in the meeting had a meeting at 6 o'clock, so we had a meeting at 5.15 about the budget last week. Well, there's nobody there. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not surprised because they're not here. Hey, Mark, for the, for the new people, why don't, why don't you start off on page one, page two again and just, just run through it, please. Okay. That's only fair way. So basically, page two is a summary of the changes to the budget uh, by category. The top part being salary, the bottom part being non-salary items. The major, and they're kind of highlighted in the notes, the major changes to the budget between last year's and this year's is that there was an elimination of a SPED teacher position and also the other two big impacts are the increase in transportation because there's a new contract that will be in effect in FY20 and we're coming off the old five-year contract so that increases about $185,000 and the assessment um, for reimbursement has been reduced from the state um, to $99,000, which you can see in the further documents. So the overall rate change in the budget, um, putting in anticipated increases um, in for bargaining units is 3.78 overall. If I could just toss one comment in at this point, I'm sure somebody out there is looking at how the elimination of a teacher gets to be a plus number, the 37000 it's because if you look <laughs> all the way in front of you <laughs> that's that's what i'm, I'm, I'm I'll attempt to explain if you look farther on in one of the sheets i don't know which page it is you'll see the choice revenue in and out a lot of there were three or four maybe five line items within the budget that we used to fund positions that we used to fund from choice <clears throat> don't have the money to fund them with so they've gone back into the regular budget that's why even with the elimination of a teacher it's a thirty-seven thousand dollar adjustment to the budget because we don't have the choice money to offset those positions that were in the budget before, have been in the budget for years could i ask one question you've got a collective bargaining number up here your collective bargaining agreement when does that run from and to it, it will run from august 1st <clears throat> well, so, so you're, so you're in negotiations now. are they, right the contract we're in now expires you know june 30th yeah. and we're we're negotiating a three-year Contract. This will be this budget that you're looking at will be the first year of the new contract. Okay. So a placeholder was is buried in there for right. that kind of been done that way for the last fifty years and I know. Mm -hmm. So then the following page, um, page three, is the cherry sheet estimates FY19 compared to 20, the, the current budget iteration that we have from Desi, which is the governor's budget. And as you can see overall, the net revenue estimates are down from 3.1 million to $3 million. And if you see the school choice receiving, it's gone from 1.4 million to 1.331. So um, that's probably the biggest impact in terms of special revenue funds is, is a decrease in school choice estimates. Additionally, the regional school transportation is a tremendous drop as well. Good, good point too. Yeah. Is there a question for you, where it says offset receipts. Um, does that really mean usually those are negative numbers so i mean it's a revenue along with chapter 70 that's that's desi or the states okay so that definitely is an income correct okay and those are the numbers that you're using in this budget correct If they change, then, for example, if uh, Chapter 70 were to change, there would be a change, or are you going to hold to this, or? I would expect that we, if Chapter 70 increases, we would change it. If Chapter 70 decreases, we'd have to change it because it's a decrease in revenue, so we'd have to take another look at the budget. That's not how we run. So, basically, we won't know what the Chapter 70 funding is until after this budget is approved. And so that difference is usually what we roll into becomes the E and D in okay. our budget. And that's why and then we apply the E and D to the following year. But it's, you usually, may have it's usually more, so you know, in that case, but all those extra kind of funds that come through that we don't know, you know, we won't know until the governor signs the budget in July. No. So, you know, that kind of thing. So adjusting the budget so instead we apply the E and D. Um, that's my understanding. Yeah. I mean, it the is the first rodeo. Usually, the usually the house budget is 
is available, sometimes even the Senate, but the conference budget is never available until long after the year's ended. So I So it is the more conservative number though, I think we understand that for sure. Yeah. Some some uh, school committees do it differently, but okay. Um, so then the next is the school choice receiving, sending, and charter sending estimates. Following that is the line item budget, line by line, with the um, kind of peach or pink column in the middle being the all funds budget, and the, the blue to its right being the local budget, and the peach colored items to the right being offsetting funding that gets you from the all funds to the local. So the bottom line budget on page 14, I believe it is, is 11466415 including transportation. Transportation for regular transportation is 432,000. So it's 11,034,415 net of transportation. The overall increase is 3.70%. Could I just drop back on page four, Frontier Regional School Choice receiving uh, 172 students, that's the October one figure this year yes these are all October ones. yep <clears throat> and that's that ongoing battle with school choice charter and the fact that we could have just for the camera we have 172 school choice students at Frontier 92 going out and almost be upside down in the numbers from the state because charter is four to one in cost with following that student. So we pay $20,000 for each student that goes out. We gotta get four students to make up for each student that goes to choose a charter school. So it's, um, it's not the, you know, it's the game we're in, but it's not the way the rules should be set up. That's what we'd love to see. So change. is Smith Bulk a charter school or is that no. a uh, Situation school choice? Yeah. It's no, it's separate issue and then separate. So in the end, you can go into, you know, you know, the folks, the tech schools are set up completely different in a, in a, in a whole other thing. So. I'm being facetious. I yeah, but. See, well, uh, actually, the school is the no. act of the legislature, <laughs> specific, combined within the state. <laughs> they don't have a school committee, they have trustees. The mayor and three. Keep this guy around. I learned something every night. Forgot it already. Yeah. Boys lost. You want me to tell you what's that? Boys lost. Boys lost. Really? So, following the budget is the assessment data. Page 16 being the calculation of the rolling five year average of students with. 2014 rolling off, 2019 rolling on. That gives you the percentages to assign the assessment. The following page, page 17, is the application of revenues to create the budget, the assessment to towns. Chapter 70 applied for frontiers assigned by DESE. Um, e and D, which is a voted number uh, to be applied based on um, school committee's discretion. And then the regional transportation number, which is another messy figure. The page following that is required minimum con contribution by town. That's calculated by Jesse based on the foundation enrollment. Following that is the application of the assessment across the, the uh, towns and the difference between FY19 and FY20. Up top is the operational budget change and then below is the operating for at 19 compared to 20 transportation the same 19 compared to 20 and then combined the following page is the assessment calculation you have the general fund budget which is includes transportation the operating budget which is net of it you apply chapter 78 using e and d then you have an operating budget requiring funding of 7.9 million. And it's broken out based on the required contributions by DESI, which is 5.2 million added up for all the um, towns. And then the 2.7 million, the net difference, 
is assessed based on um, enrollment percentages. Well, could you explain on uh, page on page 16 I think it's 16 what's the total enrollment at Frontier Sixteen or, or about six hundred fifty plus or less. I can find it. Forty six plus for school choice. Right. You're talking about FY twenty? Yeah, I like FY. Well, the FY nineteen uh, number, the real numbers as of October one. Since that's what everybody's using. Is it five fifty five? Got the right number. So on, on so 18, that's what I'm looking at, it's 555. 577, I'm not sure, what, 577 would be the October 1 of uh, this year, past year, right? Which number are you pulling? So our current enrollment is 658. Right. 658. Yep. So what is the foundation enrollment? Where do those numbers come from? <laughs> That's a number, we, we've been kicking that around because one of the big issues with um, the assessment was that, um, as you can see, Conway had a big increase from FY19 to FY20. So we, those, are, those are numbers assigned by DESI, and honestly, we'd have to do a little dig into that. It's, it's, their, it's their calculation to come up with the required minimum contribution. It's not necessarily the enrollment used for the, for the assessment of mm -hmm. the operating budget. And if you said the, the total enrollment was 658 and we had 172 school choice? That is included. That is included. The so if I subtract that, I get 486. That's the, the, the difference between that 486. That's the actual enrollment of the four towns. And we've got this other here, this district, whatever, wherever those numbers come from. We don't know where those numbers come from. So. Quite fun. Um, so this is, I'm the Conway guy, so yep. I really dug into this because the foundation enrollment and yep. the foundation minimum contribution is killing my town this year. Yes. Um, and uh, the, the foundation enrollment refers to the number of school-age kids that are credited to your town, not just the ones here. That includes your charter kids and your homeschoolers and everything else. Um, but within the foundation and the minimum contribution, there, there's a lot of hidden factors that go into this that aren't represented here. The, the respective uh, values of the town. Um, and, and so in, in this case, Conway went, the, the cherry sheet says Conway's net value uh, increased 4.86%. So and combined with 10, 13 extra kids, um, Conway's paying almost half of the increase in the assessment this year. Um, and the, you all have two, three, and 4% budgets and I have a 12% budget. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. I call up, you, you, it's cherry sheet, it's digital, it's computer, there's nobody to talk to, there's no human being that creates these numbers, um, there's no appeal, uh, and yeah, yeah. But do you, do you understand it? So if I, rather than take up time here, give you a call or something, maybe you can, um, I understand more of it. I got people that, yeah. that, that working at DESE that attempted to explain this to me and even they, and even they refer to the vagaries of algorithms and whatnot. And, um, the, uh, but basically the, the net worth of your town and the increase in value of your town has a lot to do with this equation and especially as compared to the relative increases in the other towns. And so, um, you know, so Comcast comes into town, that increases your value. Yeah, uh, Medicare payment that uh, yeah, the the Trans Canada starts generating power again from the dam in your town that increase and uh, and you re and you do a reassessment in your town and so all together that uh, adds up to four point eight six percent and before we even get to the budget 
Conway's paying, owes the other towns in the district 100 grand. That's good. Scott? You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> We've been in that position so we know. Yeah, I would, this I would, is I would echo John's point and, and give empathy to my esteemed colleague, but Sunderland's taken it twice in the last four years with the, uh, the term, the ability to pay. Like, well, what does that actually mean and how does yeah. it play out with, so I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate the digging in. I really, really do. Be rest assured, all member communities, your turn is next. Mm -hmm. It's just the You've way it is. It. I know, you had it. Yeah. And we had it before you, and we yeah. had it one time after you, and now it's Conway's turn. Yeah. Meanwhile, enrollment's kind of flat or declining organically. Anybody have any questions? When we went to Boston for the MMA, they said there were only two people that understood this formula. Right. One died, the other guy went crazy. Yeah. I would, I would ask about health insurance, if I could, Mr. Chair. Is the is the five percent uh, the actual, or is that a budgeted value? It's a budgeted value based on. There's no actual rate increase for health insurance for this year, but what we do have is um, five employees retiring, and we have the assumption that they are going to be probably employees hired who are younger who might be taking family plans. So we're budgeting with the anticipation that healthcare costs could go up based on the plans that are taken. Enrollment, enrollment anticipation. Paul, you're awful quiet over there. Yes, I am, Robert. Okay. We're in full support. <laughs> Maybe a dumb question. Uh, TMS contract ends July 31. What's replacing it? August. August. So July 31st. This is kept an extra month. We're going back. We're trying to go back to the traditional business manager model. Okay. We're in the market for a our own employee again. You're going to be hiring someone? We hope so. Is that so if you so if you look above under administrative? Administrative, okay. That's the that would be the increase if you had a traditional business manager. Yeah, one one goes up, the other one goes down because we took all the benefits and everything out of the budget a year ago when we didn't have a a person on staff when we were paying them on a contract basis. Now they won't be in here anymore, so their contract number goes down, but the person comes back. So. But you're going to have to pay health insurance and benefits. So. You know, benefits, yes. The health insurance, if, if they take it. Right. I have one more question. Sorry. Yep. What's the driving force that caused transportation above so much? New car Fuel, car driver, driver, buses. The bid. The bid. The, the, the new bid this year. We opened up the bids and, and when we were in the process of building this budget, and the, the only bid was what it was. Okay. There it is. Well, it was bid five years ago. So, yeah. you know. The yeah. bid on one side, the governor's savage budget cut on transportation on the other side. Because the reimbursement went this way and the contract price went that way, and a long ways apart. Uh, I often wondered, as a taxpayer, do, do you ask for a number of buses, or do you ask for so many students need to be bused, or what? How do you get the volume? You think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you base your what you're asking for in buses in terms of the number of kids that are on the bus route. How many of them are going to ride? You look at those buses, you see them too. There's nobody in there. Right. That's kind of where. Right. But but they need so many buses. You're not going to send one bus to do. The whole town of Waitley, the poor kid that got on first. Right, it's, it's done by it's done by it's route. Graduate. It's done by route. So within the bid is the routes. You have to assume that every kid that lives on that street is going to be waiting for the bus, and we know that we know that's not true. Never going to be true. But what what are you going to do? So you may have missed because so the group, so some folks came in afterwards. We were, we were talking about that um, in the middle of people coming in. Was that the bid that did go out? Um, is substantially lower than what our neighbors in the north pay, are paying in a joint bid. They got together to uh, reduce costs, and this bid is close to sixty thousand dollars cheaper per day um, than the bus bid, bus per day up north is. So they, you know, the, the the question of whether there is a monopoly, um, I think that uh, Gripco Transportation put more of the burden on the. The, re the regional district because of the reimbursement and less in the towns. The towns, school buses only went up $2.
we at per route. So, so he shifted where the weight was going to fall due to the reimbursement um, to the town. So that was, I believe, I'm speaking for him, which is not probably fair, but I, I believe that was the logic behind him, how he packaged it, his bid. Because, you know, many of you will have be having coffee in this garage tomorrow, so I want to make sure it's clear on that. <laughs> we, uh, we, didn't, we didn't participate in the, in the bid that went out for the county because they didn't give you an opt-out clause this time around. They did the last time. They didn't give us an opt-out clause, and we've been traditionally very pleased with what we've gotten from Gripro Transportation. That number has always been lower, and fortunately, we didn't take get in on the bid, so we didn't have we weren't stuck with what they have because we didn't need an opt-out clause because we, we never opted in. So it worked for. Them. Anybody else have questions? John, you're awful quiet. Very much you can do about it. After you sit in here for 25 years, you can pat your gums, but they don't do any good. I mean, we wish, you know, we wish transportation was down, but unfortunately it's up. We're getting less from the state. It's, you know, when the state, you know, says that we're going to get 100% reimbursement, never is going to ha never going to happen on any of these programs. You know, that's the reason why, you know, oh yeah, they want you, want you to go to, you know, K through six regionalization. Just, you know, it's a thought. I think the thought was brought out there a lot to try to save, but unless you're getting 100% reimbursement, it's going to hurt. Did you use any of your E&D to reduce the budget? 200,000. Okay. Assessments. Assessments. 200,000. Yep. Along those lines, if I could, knowing that it's been certified at 372, is 200,000 uh, historically uh, <coughs> historic number that you guys have used? I mean, by percentage, or is it more? Last year, last year, was, was, last year was, was like 146. Yeah. yeah. If you look at page 17, last year was 146, 284, and the year before it was 157, 050. So it's actually about 50,000 higher than the last two years. Which page? Right. Page 17. <coughs> If you look at the E&D across FY okay. 18, 19. But if you remember last year, too, guys, both of you were here, we had a, 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 a an accounting problem, remember, with, with Blue Cross, with insurance, health <coughs> insurance, and we had to we had to fund it yep. in, in the audit. We were So we took 60 or 65,000 from E&D to, to, to fix the accounting problem. So we had, that's why this, it may be a little more this year, but we're comfortable with that because we don't have to spend that money that we had to spend last year just to solve that particular accounting problem you're, you're, you're leading in, you were leading me into the next question which was are there are there four scenes that e and d might be used for that wouldn't be pushed forward to leave you in a comfortable position next year i guess is the question there's go ahead. You want to go? i mean there's a few things that we that we want to do in the future with e and d if that's if that's what your question is And to elaborate further, since there's people in the room. <laughs> so part of our capital, it's someone who served on the committee. I think you were throwing a softball there. Um, the, uh, the, uh, right, so part of our capital, 10-year capital plan is to use E&D to knock off some of the smaller projects that aren't going into the capital plan that's going in front of the towns this year. And I think, um, I think we're, yeah. That, that softball is being tossed up for me to say that out loud. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I was slow on the tape. All right, you're good. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, sir. <clears throat> Not to do with the numbers, but from a programming, curriculum, quality perspective, are we getting what we have? Are our dollars going to something more? Um, can you tell us a little bit about this investment that we're giving to the school? Um, what are we getting back? Are we getting back the same thing? Or is there some joy in Mudville there that, that you know, we can champion, we can get behind, we can you go to town floor with this? You know, if you don't come out with something that has something to do with the betterment for the children, it's the same old, same old for more dough. And it's a tough one. It's a tough one to roll out. So I just throw it out. Can you, anecdotally, can you shoot anything to us? Um, 
You guys have been talking about this for a long time. Anybody want to chime in? Sure. I mean, it's a it's a it's a program based budget. So you know the programs that we're providing this year, we're providing next year. We um, improve upon those programs, you know, each year. You know, last year we had a big change in um, AP course offerings and looking for capstone projects and 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 so forth. There, um, some years we invest in technology. This year, I think. Um, I think the big push we asked when we were looking for the towns is we really need the capital plan to go through to handle some of the bigger expenses. So I think, um, you know, we're talking from a programmatically, what does the community need and that kind of thing. I think our academic programming is is very strong and we're keeping that consistent. You're talking about, is there any, within the budget, is there any pizzazz to new funded new programs? No, there isn't. It's a, it, we're, we're keeping um, what we have going forward here. Um, at the same time, we're asking for the towns for money on another and another avenue to improve, upgrade the facilities and that kind of thing. So I think that's probably where the where the ask is is this year where the um, emphasis is. And so um, it's kind of I think that's in a summary. That's where we're, where we're at. So uh, I would just add to that answer that um, progress is incremental and that. Uh, you know, when you look at what I saw in numbers in terms of like data, that stuff that's trending upwards consistently is um, college acceptance, for college uh, attendance rates, and SAT scores. And those are two really good barometers of success for data, data wise. And those are up. So, and they were up from high, a little higher. Another thing that might give you a clue too, Paul, is both the charter and choice sending numbers numbers are down. So it means there's less. There's still we got 172 that want in, and we've got 94 that want out. But that's less. We're, we're sending less money out than we did a year ago, which means more kids are staying here. So there, there's something organic about that, you know, piece of data too. But it would be, you, you know, I, but I think all of those are bullet points that. When, you, when you're on town floor, that um, they, it's a salient point with the people who have to vote on mm -hmm. this. And um, if there are scores, if there are scores that have improved, if there is uh, more initiatives in the STEM area, um, all of those things contribute to a positive outcome on town floor. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and it's. I, when people go there and look at numbers, you know, they glaze over. And the things that pull on their heartstrings are what get, gets them to vote. Mm -hmm. Do you receive, well, you obviously receive MTS scores for students who attend here. Do you break those down and look at the MCAS scores for uh, students who Choice students versus non-choice students. Uh, do we compare any of those? And do we get uh, scores from MCAS scores, for example, for students who leave? No. no. So the answer to that question is no. We don't get the, students, the scores of students who leave. We haven't subcategorized students by their um, what town they're from. Yep, but just but that's that, that would be school choice. So what town they're from? I mean, we certainly break down by subgroups. From we're trying to look at any kind of patterns to improve. And so you know you look at you know you look at your scores for free and reduced lunch. You look at your other economically disadvantaged indicators. You look at um, other diversities from gender to um, you know to race to you know all those different kind of things to so look at to make sure we're reaching all student bodies and there's no gaps within there so we're looking at a lot of different data we haven't really broken it down by school choice now you have to remember a lot of our school choice students are coming all the way through our system so you'd be their scores should be similar to this the child sitting That's next the to point, them are they? um you know um, and so that kind of thing there happens as well so does that kind of answer your question so we do we try to look at data any which way that can be helpful to the child in the classroom and to the teacher teaching. So, um, and more and more, and I would say even in the past, past you know, 10 years that I've been here, the amount of time we look at data for data decisions has gone through the roof. You know, we mean everybody, 
Um, when we talk about making decisions, what's the data behind that? What's the, you know, let's try to do more and more. And the state's collecting more and more data. So you have to, while I talk about data, you also have to have a nice balance between the two. Data-driven decisions, it's great. We can go to the towns and say, hey, you know, uh, this year, um, you know, 87% of our kids went to a two or four year college. It may go down next year just because of economics in a 100 person class. And so you gotta look at numbers, and so while we can tote certain ones, and then next year, some of those things may fluctuate. You may have an SAT score, and we see that. We see classes go through that the class itself is full of stronger students, it's not a stronger class, um, where you say, wow, the numbers went through the roof, and that's where some of these standardized testing gets very, uh, it's unfair to compare class to class. You know, we look at growth scores. Another thing MCAS does is, they'll look at how you scored last year and how you scored next year, and just because you're an A-plus student, you got an A-plus again, did you have growth? And so we start looking at growth scores, and that's a new thing with this been within MCAS the last few years, too. They're looking now, where, where at where would your growth, growth come from? Where, What's that? How would you look at growth? You would look at, I really have a lot of questions. You, you, you'd look at how you, how you did, so in any student, and you look at the number of questions you got wrong and were correct, um, and, and able to see that growth from one year to the next, not just compared to everybody else in the class. Uh, you, so you, it gets harder and harder as you get closer to the top. So when do kids take the MCAS? What grades? They take it in seventh or? Seventh, eight, and ten. Seven, yeah, seven, seven eight, and ten. Seven, and then there's eight, a science ten. one that falls depending on when you take the subject test in yeah. high school. And then all through elementary school, three on every year. And my experience with the looking at eight and ten was it wasn't worth looking at because the tenth grade students always did substantially better than the eighth grade students. Right. All of a sudden it meant something. Uh, there's that and then there's the politics of the test. The tenth grade <laughs> test is actually easier than the eighth grade test. Right. Yeah. Per, not test to test, but per, per the scoring mm -hmm. out, outcomes of that because the state's in the job of not of graduating students as well. We don't have a problem with students passing the test. Although the test has been is far more difficult now to get um, you know, to get the advanced scores than it was a few years back, but you know, Frontier has never had a problem getting the students through. Um, and, and even regardless of disability, we have a very, very good track record of getting everybody through to graduate. Well, um, Darius, um, you know, just as a point, it's not uh, not to, meant to be an argument, but unless we can always find reasons for not coming forth with certain statistics because of the changes. But if you don't start that kind of dialogue mm -hmm. with the towns, it's always just going to be dollars and cents. There's going to be no quality in back of it, in back of those discussions. So somehow, some way, it'd be great if you could change that because you know, people that came before you had absolutely no stomach for it. That'd be a nice change. Thanks. All right. Anybody else have any more questions before we close the public hearing? Scott? Follow up with a question that Skip was just asking, that is the uh, multi-year capital program year one costs. How are those being decided and what do those look like? And how are they going to be presented? Are they be in a format of a capital assessment or are they in the operating budget? You know, there was an area of discussion. Capital assessment. Capital assessment. Correct. Yes. Okay. So that will be, those numbers were passed on um, in preliminary to the town administrators to pass on to all the um, finance and, and select board and that will officially, this group will vote that on April 4th and which then we will officially notify the towns that the, the regional district is, is planning to take on debt or is hoping to take on debt and then go to the towns for approval for that. So that whole process will be, you have the numbers ahead of time to look it over and do the proper planning but the the actual process of it and the reason why we're holding off on that is you have to be within as soon as we let you know of that we're hoping to incur debt um, you have to have a town meeting within 45 days 60 days and the, um, the, the spread out between Conway Central Olympia being first and Conway being last makes us hold off to, to announce that so that they can have a town meeting within that time frame. Will there be much deviation from the draft? It, it's my understanding, I don't want to speak for the board, but the draft is what we're promising to move forward with. Um, so that there was, you know, if we were to change that, I think we'd have to communicate 
um, extensively with the committees because we kind of said this is what we're looking at doing forward and letting you know in advance you know, changing at the last minute unless reducing it um, I, I think would be unfair it's, it's not what we went into this whole process where we had a you know committee with you know town members and school committee members um, working together so again correct me if I'm wrong on that at all so members what's there it seems to me that there's a time frame before the town meeting a certain number a certain amount of time before town meeting where the towns have to have that information i'm not exactly sure what that is uh, i have to notify you in seven days this is i'm going off of memory here so it's a tough memory on the camera but it's my understanding that i have to notify you in seven days and then you have up to What's that? Depends on 14 days, seven days for a special, 21 right. for a And then at that point, there's a time frame in which you had to, which you can have a town meeting to decide the outcome of that. And so by waiting, we're allowing, I don't want to say we're allowing, we're working with you so that it happens during your annual town meeting yeah. and not having to do a special town meeting. And so the April 4th is that is the, within that time frame to make that happen with a few days to spare on the other end in case of things had moved around. <clears throat> so that's the reason, that was a the timeline of that. So I don't have the exact, in front of me, the specifics of it, but that was the, that was the goal within that. It's my Stop. understanding that the selectmen don't want to put it on for town meeting, they just about that. That's correct. correct. And so just so you, you don't have to take it to town meeting if you don't choose to, right? You have that, the selectmen have that option of what? They have 45 days by law. They have the option to take the school committee's decision to incur debt to a town meeting. Okay. Don't have to if they don't want to. They and can accept is, the committee's incurrence of debt. It's not, it's not the debt it's paid for. The appropriation is still a town meeting. Appropriation would yeah. still have to be a town meeting, I think, or a special town meeting, one or the other. The idea was we didn't want to be put in the town's in a position to create a special town meeting to do that. But so that that was actually the figure that I was talking about. Is what do all the towns have that number that we can incorporate within our budget? Sure your request. Yes. Okay. That's part of what I sent out. If you haven't got it, I'll get it to you. Scott. Lastly, thank you. Um, <coughs> did the school committee adopt the creation of a stabilization fund? And if so, it, I don't see it as an expense line under maintenance of buildings or grounds or equipment. So we have one already. Gary had one on on file. I don't see any expense budget. That's the point I'm asking. And it's not well, in there. So well, I mean, it's a, a stabilization fund would be another special revenue fund. It would be outside the general fund budget. Yeah. Thank you. Stabilization ex expense against that fund should be in the budget, then. It has a revenue stream, and it should be reflected somewhere. If you're spending from the fund, it's an expense, right? Right. Well, currently the fund, there's a fund set up. There's no balance in it. So I would say probably it would be part of the overall revenue source if, if it were funded and it was going to be expended upon. So we would put that in there. But it wouldn't be part of the general fund budget because it's outside the general fund. It's still part of an assessment to the town. So how do we know what that expense is? That I'm saying that would probably be showing if once we put it together and that's going to be used, it would be used um, as either an expense line here to offset yep. revenue, or uh, we'd have to somehow show it and net it against revenue right. in the revenue line. Yeah, we'd, I mean, obviously, we'd have to show that as a right. somehow as an expenditure. Needs, some, needs to be appropriated to, which needs to be demonstrated what the expense is. Got it. Thank you. It takes a two thirds vote. School. Anybody else have any questions? Did you have to change a regional agreement? To authorize this uh, additional expenditure? At one time when you built a school, you had to have all four towns, they all had, or you had to have three out of four towns agree. And so it's, it'll be four out of four towns have to agree to the capital. There's four nothing in the regional agreement about capital the expenditures. Extra expenditures. And is that set up for an override? The regional agreement is silent on capital expenditure. You won't find it in there. It was never put in there. 
be something that's not in it. Right, but council is, our school council has told us that we need four out of four. So for the capital plan to move forward from all four towns. So, so the regional agreement should have language on this to help us in the future, and yes. it's something we can. We but can you don't have any now, is that correct? What's that? We don't have any. No. It's silent. It's there's silent. No, there isn't anything in there. There's nothing written about it in there. So, so you're just taking the initiative, and you're going to run through with that. We're going to do what we did with past practice on these kind of things. Yeah. Council says it's four out of four. So, so four out of four. 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 That's, I don't think anybody's going to argue the fact that each town gets to weigh in on it. Unlike the operating budget, which is three out of four. So if we went that, you know, if somebody had a, something in their bottom about this plan, they would use that. So just assume we move four out of four and then address the regional agreement in the future. I mean, there's a lot of loose ends in that that could be tightened up um, one step at a time. Lastly, if I could, something that, that I want to feed back to something that Paul had said earlier about initiatives, new initiatives, growth in academic side, as, as um, dull as the capital and the facilities uh, is as a subject, by shedding light on that and putting a program behind it, that gives breathing room in future years for those academics that have been squeezed by either a debt schedule or a lack of revenues that have been um, shifted away from that. So. Again, it's it's dull, it's clunky, it's like watching a gear grind, but it's really important to strategically on the academic side to take care of these areas. So. Um, and I would go so far as to say that it would be an excellent um, <clears throat> um, opportunity. It would be an opportunity for the superintendent of schools to stand up front of each town and give a state of the school address. What are we paying for? I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, you wanted the job, so. <laughs> um, he's, been on, he's been under a lot of pressure the last since he's been <laughs> in charge. And I, and I can really see him doing it. Is there Some of the others, probably not, but I can see him doing it and seeing it flying. So, while we have the opportunity to strike, let's do it. Something else for you to tell me. State of the Union. Yeah. Well, some people clap and some people sit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're red all going to wear white. Definitely. Olivia and I have a plan. Yeah. Mary's on board. We've got a room in Sydney. I do, but there is part of our capital plan is to. Um, provide information for the town. I can probably I'll be speaking to that literature that we're going to be handing out so that people have a clear understanding of what we're doing, what we're asking for, and I could throw some highlights of what programs are and what's being the use of such, and I can, you know, we can jazz that up and, and uh, do that. So that's already kind of in the work, so I can just adding more to it, I think, will kind of fit some of those needs you're talking about. It's a lot easier to talk about if somebody has something in their hands rather than me just pontificating, which I'm not great at. We want to hear try. Everybody else have anything? At this time, at seven o'clock, we close into the public uh, public meeting. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.